Welcome to Studio C70 at the Committee of 70. I'm Patrick Christmas, Policy Director here. Next week, we got a big primary election in the city of Philadelphia, May 21st. Polls open at 7 o'clock, open through 8 o'clock. Um, elections are like job interviews. We got a whole bunch of folks running for these jobs next week. Uh, we got one of the, the job applicants here, Ron Adams. Ron, welcome. Nice to meet you, Pat. <laughs> Thanks for coming in. So Ron is running for City Council District 4. Yes. All righty. And we got, we got 15 minutes, so we're going we're gonna to jump right into it. Could you first just kind of like introduce yourself and, and tell us why are you running for City Council District 4? Okay. Well, my name is Ron Adams. Uh, I've been a resident of District 4 for about 14 years. Uh, currently, I work at the High Intensity Drug Trafficking Area Program, HIDA. So it's out of the Office of the National Drug Control Policy, uh, which deals with the disruption and dismantlement of drug trafficking organizations. Mm -hmm. So there are 32 HIDAs throughout the country, obviously in high drug trafficking areas, Philadelphia being one of them. Mm -hmm. And so my work with HIDA has allowed me to work with state, local, and federal law enforcement, mm -hmm. also work with stakeholders within the community that are looking to combat the opioid epidemic. Mm -hmm. And you start to realize the importance of when it comes to solving big problems, mm -hmm. getting ideas from all different types of stakeholders. So one of the issues that we had in this country beforehand was police working one way and public health working another way, mm -hmm. kind of working against each other instead of with each other. Mm -hmm. And we realized that as they kind of share information, tactics, beliefs, mm -hmm. and, and data points, we can better, get a better handle on you know, the opioid epidemic and the drug crisis in this country. And I felt that uh, I could take those lessons into politics. Mm -hmm. you know, rather than um, politicians or teachers or public health all working in different directions, I really think that your representatives can play a huge role in being a central hub of communication and make sure that everybody's on the same page, mm -hmm. if you can create buy-in mm -hmm. to solve those like complex problems that we have in the city. So mm -hmm. that's one of the reasons I'm running. But like, like most people, you know, I'm a citizen that was worried about the future of my community yeah. as far as development and education, et cetera. And I think it was Gandhi that said, be the change that you want to see mm -hmm. in the world. And so... I decided to run for office rather than just complain. Yeah, I hear that. So you know, one of the most important things about uh, about you know any election is that you know there are a lot of folks running and you get a, you get a, a but get to you get to put a, a full agenda, full platform out there. Can you el elaborate a bit more, like what your your top three priorities are? Okay. Um. So so one of the things that's really close to my heart is, is poverty, and I think okay. there's like um, a short and long term answer to that, right? And one of the long term answers that I would like to start working on is changing the way that we focus as far as education around. Mm -hmm. Uh, kids in our society. So I think we have about roughly 70% of students graduating, which is up from, you know, lows of 50, not only 10 years ago, which is great. Mm -hmm. But um, in this country and in this city, we've pretty much established a culture where the only answer after college is going, I mean, after high school is going to college, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. putting yourself in maybe in some figures, six figures in debt. Mm -hmm. And so I would really like to see a heavy investment and focus in career technical programs. You know, we need to prepare you know, the students of Philadelphia for an option after high school that's not just college. Mm -hmm. um, and that needs to be in conjunction with all stakeholders. What are the jobs in Philadelphia yeah. uh, that they're lacking in need? What are the things we can prepare high school students for? And how can we get more people into that job track uh, to help out with that property? Mm -hmm. um, so that's, that's, that's one that's really mm -hmm. big for me. Um, two is economic reinvestment. And so in parts of my district, like in West Philadelphia, there are economic corridors that are in dire um, need of redevelopment and investment. Um, and you talk about the 10-year tax abatement, which has done great things for Center City, but mm -hmm. hasn't done as much uh, for some of the other areas of the city, like mm -hmm. North Philadelphia, like West Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. um, there are things that we've tried in the city in the past that have failed, I think, mainly due to bad timing. Mm -hmm. You know, around 07, 08, the economy crashed, so a lot of the uh, transit-oriented development ideas kind of fell by the wayside. But I think if we can get back into that, mm -hmm. that now with mm -hmm. kind of like a strong voice that's leading, looking to lead the way in that, mm -hmm. we can help out a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and, then, and then third would probably have to be uh, development in the community, mm -hmm. making sure that your community um, looks and feels the way you want it to do. You know, there's mm -hmm. a lot of talk about councilmanic prerogative. Yep. And the problem with that is people have a problem with the fact that development in their community is not a relationship between the community and developers, but a relationship between developers and politicians, mm -hmm. right? Oh, this goes up because you cut this deal or it's being sold for this much because of this deal, not because of how it fits in with the community. And so mm -hmm. those are probably, that's the last thing. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the biggest reasons I started running and one of the top three things I would be looking to change mm -hmm. as I enter into my first four years mm -hmm. there. So you know, could you talk a little bit about how, you know, how a, as a district council member, oh, we, have, we, have, we have 10 
uh, uh, city council members who represent districts, and then seven at large. So, you know, for for each of these, or at least a couple of them, how you know how you you pursue these as as a district member. So, you know, the the first one you mentioned, education, and kind of as education as as a uh, as a career track, not just into college, but in other into other tracks as well. Like, so, what what might, what might that legislation look like? So, what that might, legislation might look like is how do we repurpose the schools that are you know actually closing down and kind of invest into the amount of teachers mm -hmm. and resources to use to repurpose those schools mm -hmm. to service career technical programs. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and my district like Overbrook High is, is, in, is in need. Um, Roxborough is shipping a lot of people in um, from other areas of the city because mm -hmm. of the closing of Strawberry Mansion. Mm -hmm. And so I would be looking to meet with the educators and community leaders across my district to find out which community schools are failing those communities and how can we look to put resources for those to be the first steps we're looking when we're looking to expand, you know, career technical programs in Philadelphia. So that's mm -hmm. how I would try to do that mm -hmm. from the district point of view. Yeah. And you, and you mentioned Councilman prerogative, uh, you know, just now, so prerogative getting a, a surprisingly amount of the immediate attention actually for, for something that's usually that you're not, not too well known and, you know, outside, you know, kind of specific and, and political sphere. So pro prerogative is basically when a district council member has a lot of influence over, you know, a certain land use decision in their district. So on, on that issue, it, Prerogative. I mean, do you think do you think, do you think there are things that we could do uh, you know better around that particular practice? I mean, are, is there are there certain new rules that should be codified or norms that sh norms that should be changed? I mean, that district members right now have a, have a lot of you know influence over over what gets developed and what doesn't. And for I think you know there are lots of pros and cons on both sides of this. There are lots of pros and cons, and and Philadelphia is a very interesting city that mm -hmm. like you know northeast Philadelphia looks way different than center city Philadelphia which yeah. looks way different than like Roxborough and Manion. so that's why you have council back progress so right. one of the first things you need to change is increase the power of kind of like uh, the land banking community community that they put together to make sure that like when it comes to the actual sale of land mm -hmm. um, that the taxpayers aren't being cheated right mm -hmm. so we should have no situations where my friend is buying it for a hundred thousand dollars and then selling it to another developer for five mm -hmm. or six hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars you know councilmatic prerogative should be geared towards the type of projects not actually how the land is sold and so mm -hmm. there needs to be checks and balances that even if ron adams in district four wants to make sure that over here, we're building a community center as opposed to a multifamily unit mm -hmm. that whatever we're building, we're going through the proper channels to make sure that it's being bid on properly um, and then everybody has a chance. I mm -hmm. think that's the part that people have a problem with, that it looks like politicians are lining their pockets either in cash or influence mm -hmm. um, with, with, with developers. Mm -hmm. you know, because in actuality, most communities probably want the idea. All right, let me put it for instance. Mm -hmm. Density. Um, is something we're looking to increase in like the city. We want to make sure that housing is cheaper for people, that we're dealing with the problems of gentrification, um, and that there's a lot of groups out there that are looking to lower parking requirements to find out different ways you can make the city more dense and make housing more affordable. But in areas like the Northeast or even like in Roxborough or Manion, um, that's not exactly the case. They don't really have the infrastructure to do away with parking spaces and things of that nature. And mm -hmm. multifamily housing um, there is maybe not as big of an importance as it is in, say, like West Philadelphia or University City. Mm -hmm. um, so in those situations, you don't want a one-size-fits-all zoning, and nor do the communities. Mm -hmm. But on the other end, it can't be abused. Mm -hmm. And so I think mm -hmm. there are ways that you can put checks and balances in place, things the city has already been doing, but they just need to strengthen those checks and balances. Mm -hmm. Um, so, I, I mean, kind of like pivoting, pivoting off of the, the, the issues we've seen around pro prerogative, uh, at least in the headlines over the past year or so, um, you know, and this, you know, this has been your first time running for office? This is my first I'm time sure, running for I'm sure it's been an interesting experience. A very interesting <laughs> experience. I have a lot of stories of being I'm a first sure. time, first run, especially being someone that's from like an outside. I literally am somebody that was on their couch, that was on their community Facebook group, mm -hmm. was hearing complaints and decided, you know what, yeah. I'm going to run for office. Um, most people that run for office are like, I'm going to pick this job with the city first, or I'm going to work in this person's office, or I'm part of this ward leader, and I, I've, mm -hmm. I've, I've already gathered this amount of support, right? Mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. I know who Pat Christmas is from Committee mm -hmm. of 70, mm -hmm. right? Or I know mm -hmm. who the writers are at Philly Magazine, right. or I know who is in right. charge of Reclaim Philadelphia, right. whereas I, you know, I kind of learned about all those things as I started to run, right? Yeah. And so yeah. it's, it's been a very interesting process, yeah. very eye-opening. Um, I think the most eye-opening thing to me is like, the things I care about a lot more. Like, yeah. I like make sure every pedestrian gets to cross first, right? Like, right. I uh, I rinse out all of my recycling to make sure that the purity levels are high, so that we can mm -hmm. kind of recycling mm -hmm. those things. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I you know I, I I think about daylighting curbs or something that I never really even thought about before, but it's a great idea. So you learn running for office. I think 
makes you so much more of an engaged citizen. Yeah. Like win or lose, like yeah. there is so much more I want to see and be involved in my community mm -hmm. because of what I've been exposed to running for office. Yeah. So I'm, I'm fascinated here, especially with the kind of the, the you know, fresh, fresher insight. So from what you, you know, you, know, you learned around how, how Philly's you know, kind of civic and political spheres work and how our election, you know, how our elections, our local elections, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and, and generally how city hall works and city hall, I'm, I'm speaking, speaking to kind of generally city council, the, you know, the mayor and the executive branch, you know, what do you think are our biggest challenges or our biggest issues as far as how local government works, our local politics? So I don't, I, I, I think it's a machine, which is a great thing, mm -hmm. but I think we do lack, um, an independence okay. from a lot of different council members. You know, the problem with council member is that no one even checks when someone from district, just someone says something from district four happens, all the other districts kind of like fall in line. Yeah. And, and when someone does kind of, kind of go against that, that party line, um, you, you can see them being challenged. Like what happens with uh, Maria Quinona Sanchez in the seventh. Mm -hmm. um, I think one of the biggest problems is that there aren't more people like myself running, but I think mm -hmm. you've kind of seen that mm -hmm. change with this election. There are mm -hmm. a lot of different people running for mm -hmm. at large not so much for the district, but more than in the past. Yeah. And I think if you're bringing more ideas to the table and different types of people involved, um, you're going to, you're going to see a lot of that, that old school kind of like stagnant mentality mm -hmm. go away. And one of the biggest ways that we're going to be able to do that are things like this. When community groups, when political action organizations are like, doing as much as they can to get the names and faces of candidates out there when they're mm -hmm. looking to tell their constituents about what's happening. When people are talking about council man and prerogative, people are engaged. As more mm -hmm. people are engaged, mm -hmm. more people are running. As the more people are running, I think it'll break down some of the problems I've seen with the machine. Because like, if nobody is ever running against you, it makes it really hard for you to decide that you want to make wholesale changes. You kind of want to just go with the status quo, um, not upset the apple cart. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Because, because you don't have to worry about that, right? And it was like Comcast for the longest had the worst customer service in the, in the country, let alone the city, because they had no competition. As more competition comes along, Comcast mm -hmm. is doing a little different things to make sure that they mm -hmm. can kind of better attend to their constituents. And mm -hmm. so constituent services, really listening to the people and not so far as the money and influences that happen on the other side of politics mm -hmm. are things that I think need to change and are changing because of organizations like Committee of, of 70 and, and, and um, our news coverage now yeah. um, out yeah. there on the elections. Yeah, yeah. well, certainly we'll, we'll get new arguments from me or from this organization about having more candidates is, is, a, is, is a good thing. You, what, uh, what structural challenges do you think we face? So, because, you know, so, so for example, like 70 put out a, a platform you know, last month we're, we're, we're calling PR1 and, and list a number of things that I think should be up for discussion. I mean, it's certainly, it's not a prescriptive list of the things that have to change uh, all the solutions, but you know, it's things like, well, adding more transparency account and accountability around, around account prerogative term limits, which I know that's like, that's, that's a double-edged sword. Um, the, uh, even uh, the way that folks end up on the ballot that we have, uh, you know, folks draw, you know, draw their, their, uh, their ballot position out of, out of a coffee can right now. If you draw a good number, uh, that's a, that's a pretty helpful thing, at least when you're running for certain office, the district, district uh, office, not quite as much, no, that's, but at large and, and judge is a huge deal. Well, well, that's interesting. Cause I, mm -hmm. I, 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 I tend to think judges should probably be, I think we might want to look at a situation where they're appointed as opposed mm -hmm. to elected. Yeah. Um, people don't know a lot about the judges yeah. and the fact that it's, it, it's out of a coffee can and your ballot position is horrible. But even if it was ballot positioning, I mean, you're right. I mean, you can change that with technology. I mean, all of these ballot positions should probably be uh, random depending on what booth you walk into or what mm -hmm. district you win. It shouldn't mm -hmm. be certain persons, number one, two, three, across, four. Across, across the city. Four. And mm -hmm. it's 2019. There's no reason technology mm -hmm. shouldn't be able to take care of, uh, of that. Um, when it comes to the clarity in, in council and making sure that amendments to bills are being seen and that everything is out in the open, mm -hmm. that's always going to be for the best. The more sure. things are behind the curtain, the more you're going to get people being like, wait a minute, like so-and-so is allowed to, like, it's not good that the soda tax is clouded in a union, you know, wanting to actually help destroy another union. It's not mm -hmm. good that there are stories about mm -hmm. uh, a tow truck industry being subverted because of a uh, certain powerful political members, you know, grudge against them. Mm -hmm. And that's what happens when mm -hmm. things are, are behind the curtain. Those yeah. things might not even be true, right? They're accusations, but yeah. if all of those amendments and processes are put out in the forefront and people are able to discuss them, mm -hmm. you know, before they come mm -hmm. up, 
and, and, and able to look at the process, you don't have to worry about being clouded in so much shadiness. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, actually, that's that's something we talk around uh, uh, talk about around here a lot. I mean, whether it's I mean, redistricting is another big one right now. I mean, whether, how council member prerogative works. I mean, any basically anything in government, people have to trust the process, right? I mean, the the folks involved may have been like you know earnest and doing things, but you know, by the book. But if people don't trust the process, if and if they can't see what's happening, I mean, that's you know we were we run into a big issue. Perception is reality, right? So yeah. if people if, yeah. they, if you're if you're looking at it and they think that they can't trust it, mm -hmm. then you need to make changes. Yeah. And, and the same thing, like you said, with term limits. You know, I, I went back and forth in that mm -hmm. because I figured, like, who's going to look after the long-term viability of your city mm -hmm. if you have shorter term limits? Mm -hmm. But then in other ways, you know, you realize that, you know, if, you, if it's three to four terms, that, that is a long time. And other cities have done this. And what mm -hmm. you've seen is mm -hmm. you've seen a lot more turnover, a lot more kind of like, you know, that, that to borrow a to borrow an okay term from a person I don't agree with, draining the swamp, right? You know, you know, you kind of, you you see that you have a different type of politician running in mm -hmm. places like New York where they have mm -hmm. that a, a much uh, younger cohort, mm -hmm. which is how you kind of get those new ideas and those mm -hmm. long-term thinking. Younger people are realizing that they're going to have to deal with the long-term consequences more, so they're yeah. they're going to look after that. So I've actually come around to thinking that that's a really good idea, mm -hmm. to putting uh, term limits on council. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you know, we we already. We, have one minute left. Okay, uh, let, me, let me let me give you the floor. What's like? What's one th one thing folks got to remember between now and uh, an election day next next week? So the thing that I want people to remember the most is that you have a choice. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of times, you know, people complain about what's not happening in in city government, and you have a lot of people running now uh, that are that are that are feeling the same way as you. And so if you don't like the way things have been done, you know, take the time to watch things like this, read up, and see if there might be an option on the ballot and your vote does matter if you get out there and vote. It's 18 to 20% in these elections. If we can get them to 40 or 50%, you'll see a lot of changes in City Hall. Ron Adams, thanks for coming through. Thanks a lot, Mr. Christmas. Uh, Appreciate uh, it. All righty. Election Day is uh, next Tuesday, May 21st. Polls are open 7 o'clock to 8 o'clock. Uh, signing off from uh, Studio C7. We have other interviews coming up this afternoon. Thanks a lot. See you on Election Day.